So let's talk about another method that you can use. Um, it's just a different flavor and it requires different things. Um, so let's, let's kind of go to the next thing here. So the next one that we're going to talk about is called uh, a predictor corrector method. One technique here is called Hoyne's method. The idea behind a predictor corrector is that Let's go to our little plot here. So let's say that we choose some time t j, and at this time we estimate the temperature t j and the derivative um, associated with this. All right. So this is d t d t at j. Right? This this derivative here. So. What we can do is we can use that derivative to step forward in time as we did before. So we're going to step forward to t at j plus 1. And that gives us a new estimate of the state of the system. So now at this point, what we're going to do is estimate the derivative again at our new point. So basically at this uh, at tj plus 1, we're going to estimate the derivative again. And that's going to be um, let's say it looks something like this. Right, so this is now d t d t at j plus 1. But importantly, we're not actually going to take the step according to either of these, right? We're not going to take the step according to the first, the first one we estimated here or this one. So we're going we're gonna to call this estimate d t hat because we're not actually going to use it. So it's dt hat dt, we're calling this estimate of temperature t hat at j plus 1. All we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative, uh, let's see, let me get a different color. So we're going to take this derivative here and this derivative here. Right? If you sort of map it out, you have one that's like this and you have one that's like this. We're going to take the average of these two derivatives, this dotted line that I drew. Right? This is dt dt at j plus dt hat dt at j plus 1 and divide by 2 and that's going to give us the estimate of the derivative that we're actually going to use to step from the current time and temperature to the next. So our step as we would write it out would look something like this t sorry uh, it would look something like this it would say t at j plus 1, do this in the right color, j plus 1 is equal to tj, the current temperature, plus our estimate of the derivative, which is dt dt at j plus dt dt, uh, sorry, the dt hat dt at j plus 1 uh, times 1 over 2 times our time step. All right. So in every case, we're still evaluating the uh, the state equation. That's our, our derivative, dt dt at j. We're still evaluating that using the state equation. So that's t infinity minus t j over tau l c. But for the for the estimate of uh, the second derivative, that um, th that is the second one in time, the dt hat. We need to predict the temperature, right? We need to predict the temperature that we're going to get. So we're saying t hat at j plus 1 is equal to t at j plus this uh, derivative dt dt at j times delta t. Right? This is our, our guess or estimate of the next uh, temperature. Then we use this to evaluate the second the derivative at that next, um, the second time step. So we're going to say now d t hat d t j plus 1 is equal to t infinity minus t hat at j plus 1 over tau lc. Um, and then we step forward again using this equation up here. So we have our estimate of the derivative at the second time step. We have our estimate of the derivative at the first time step. We've used the first time step to predict the temperature here that lets us plug in for the second 
uh, the second evaluation. So this, this entire process is just a sequence of evaluating a couple derivatives that we can use to estimate the real derivative, right? These are always approximations. So we're just estimating the derivative that we're gonna need to take a step forward in, in an accurate way. And what this predictor corrector or implicit method does is it allows you to get, um, is it allows you to, to maintain a stable solution, right? You're very unlikely to be computing two derivatives, uh, one at a different time than another, that's gonna give you a, a wild estimate that's gonna fly way off uh, in, into um, large errors. So this is a, a way of maintaining uh, really good stability. And so I'll just say this technique is uh, good stability. So what you'll notice here is in fact, it's so good at stability that um, it is not possible to choose a time step that's long enough that causes the solution to go unstable. Instead, what you get is uh, an accumulation of error Right, so you, the reduction in the time step will help you address error issues, but um, the solution will always remain stable.